नमस्कार हाय फ्रेंड्स इन दिस लॉकडाउन टाइम ऑल ऑफ यू मस्ट बी इन द होम एंड इज द राइट टाइम पर हैम्स यू मस्ट बी एक्सप्लोरिंग द वेरियस मींस एंड मोड्स टू नो गेन योर नॉलेज एंड टुडे आल्सो आई एम गोइंग टू हेल्प यू इन दैट टुडे वी विल ट्राई टू लर्न अबाउट द सुपरस्टार्स बट यू नो माय सुपरस्टार्स आर नॉट द सुपरस्टार्स फ्रॉम द बॉलीवुड और द हॉलीवुड because all the superstars which are from the cosmos are far far away from us just imagine you like somebody from the hollywood or a bollywood who is also equally a superstar what will you do you being a let us consider you being a richest and the world famous person of the world if you want to know information about the superstar from the bollywood or hollywood what will you do you prefer to go to meet him or her and try to know about them in more details or other way you being a richest and the powerful person you can invite the superstar from bollywood or hollywood and have a cup of tea and then you can know about them whatsoever you would like to but what about the superstars which are in the cosmos can this strategy works there no of course not neither we can go there neither we can invite them so certainly what is the way that we can know about them let's try to learn about them let's try to study about them for this we'll make use of some of the slides to know about them then certainly what will you do you will try to make use of the telescope because neither you can go to them neither you can bring to them to us so from our whatever the places we are at the whatever the location on the earth but something which comes to us from them is not but the light and we all can observe them through the light coming from them and then we try to explore more about them so the light coming from them has a huge amount of information we can explore about them where are they how are how far are they what is the content of those these object these stars right so let's try to see what are our neighbors how big is our system is how big is of the universe so try to make learn about them so let's go out and try to see them when we try to go out certainly not from our home but certainly away from our planet earth then when we try to see about them which one is the first nearest object to us and no doubt it is a beautiful moon that we could see either a, on the day of a new moon night sorry on the day of a full moon night which you can see a beautiful moon in the sky but beyond that of course we can see a various amount of planets which are in our neighbor we can see these planets of course as beautiful as you see on the screen but with the help of certain amount of instrument certain amount of back end instrument that we use in the telescope with the help of certain amount of cameras like cctv camera we can use certain amount of web cameras then we can process those images and get such a kind of a beautiful pictures of our neighbors these are all our neighbors certainly after the planets what is there then beyond the planets of course in between the planets also there are something more which are also part of our system which is part of our solar system and those are called the asteroidal belt and asteroidal belts are lying between the two planets between the mars and the between the jupiter the beautiful objects which are moving around these you know huge amount of small small object moving in the orbit are called the asteroids which are lying in between the mars and the jupiter beyond that we'll have a uranus neptune and of course beyond that there are a frequent visitor to us i am sure you must know about them those are called the comets some of the comets are regular comets some of them are irregular what does it mean it means regular means they come and visit the sun at every certain interval and those which are irregular comes once in a while and we do not know when they are going to come all the visits of those comet depend on the the orbit that they follow so the parabolic orbit some of them follow the 
hyperbolic orbit we will not know about will not go into the details about those orbit but yes they are part of our solar system beyond the comets if you try to see the picture you will see there is a huge amount of you know belt which is circled here in the first figure we call it as a kuiper belt so lot amount of these comets are residing in the kuiper belt region and beyond the kuiper belt it's a huge amount of a cloud we call it as a oort cloud perhaps this is up to this distance we can say this is what is our solar system is up to so much of distance and if you try to see the distance up to the oort cloud it goes beyond the lakhs of astronomical unit astronomical unit distance is nothing but the distance between the sun and the earth distance between sun and earth is about 15 crore kilometers and if we multiply that 15 crore kilometers by 1 lakh then it can be more than crores of kilometers that we could imagine and this is what is the objects which are part of our solar system so we can summarize those objects and call them as a solar system object right from the sun planets natural satellites then we have asteroidal belt we have various asteroids of the various size then we have a comet we have a kuiper belt we have a oort cloud everything that up to this level we can consider they are part of our solar system of course beyond the solar system we we'll have to leave this is also a one system and we go beyond the solar system and then what is the next neighbor to us is nothing but the star the story of the star starts from here this is the first neighbor to us and it's called the alpha centauri and the story goes beyond and the distance is also very now the first nearest star to our solar system alpha centauri which is also about the 4.3 two light years away how what is the light year light year is an unit of a measurement of a distance in the astronomy what is the number how much is the figure that comes out for that we must know what is the speed of the light all must be knowing the speed of the light is about 3 lakh kilometers per second and how much distance the light cover within a one year so for that reason what we need to do is to convert the entire amount of you know days in the year into the hours into the minutes and into the second that means 365 multiplied by 24 multiplied by 60 multiplied by 60 that gives rise to the total number of seconds and that has to be multiplied by 3 lakh kilometer that comes then we come out with the distance of a one light year and that distance Here for one light year is a measure of an astronomical distances so first neighbor to us known as alpha centauri which is about 4.32 light years is the first star now if we go beyond what we see we see a bunch of stars together this is the whole system that means even the stars they are also live in a you no know, together they also have a family the picture that you see here is called the a globular cluster in which there are millions of stars are you know living together with an one of the system and this like this there are open system there is a what we call it as a open star cluster we have a globular cluster and all those clusters also as also part of what we call it as a interstellar material and beyond the globular cluster what you see in a galaxy is the huge class structure this is the gas cloud it's a huge structure which ranges from the huge amount of light years and it consists of all hydrogen molecules this is it's 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 a part of a system making as a huge cloud of a molecular hydrogen it's also part of our one of the galaxy and beyond these these are all the small entities from the galaxy and then combination of all these stars globulars cluster open cluster then the gas cloud that everything become a part of an bigger system called as an galaxy so this is what we can think about intergalactic objects so if we summarize this intergalactic object we can consider there are stars part of the globular cluster open cluster gas cloud we see a various amount of other no kind of an objects in the galaxy these are called the intergalactic objects 
and the material between these two different stars we call it as an interstellar material so everything within the galaxy we can call it as an intergalactic material so this is how once we leave the galaxy then we see variety of galaxies we see uh, one spiral galaxy we can see uh, uh, what we call a lenticular galaxy elliptical galaxy the, the picture that you see here is every object that you see is a galaxy consists of billions of stars which can have thousands and thousands of glass cloud we can have thousands and millions of globular and open cluster and that becomes a one galaxy and in this picture there are thousands of galaxies are together and these galaxies can also become a cluster of galaxy this is the real picture taken by the hubble telescope in this picture what you see a variety of the galaxies and they also have been part of you know what we call it as an another system some of the galaxies also have their own system they live in again together and what we see here is a number of galaxies being together which have a different in shape and that is how the whole complex structure becomes and we call it as a huge structure of our universe this is how our universe is universe has thousands and millions and billions of galaxy which are part of our solar, part of our universe and that this galaxy have millions and billions of stars one star has thousands of you know various amount of thousands of stars can have a various solar systems and sun is also one of the example of our milky way galaxy which has a planetary system so like this if you try to see as an end together this is called the extra galactic object you see one galaxy uh, after just going out of away from the galaxy you see two more galaxies which are part of it and then you see the different galaxy which becomes another system which is together then like this we can call it as an extra galactic object or we can an extra galactic material this is how our universe is all together made up of now to know about them we have discussed so many things about the astronomy now to know about different kind of an object there are different kind of a people who work together and they come together and try to learn about them so it is important to know how do the astronomers work number one those who have a variety of instruments to study let us say some of them have a telescope some of them have a polarimeter some of them have a photometer these are all the various instruments that they use with the help of telescope and they study they collect the material they collect the you know observations and in the second process once they collect the observations they do the data analysis they try to learn about they try to analyze the data what is the content how do the spectra of the star look how do the image of the star look and we call it as a data process and in the third stage interpretation of those data with the help of knowing you know the present science that we know all about then we interpreting that data is called the observational astronomers those of observational astronomers depend on the data that they collect with the variety of instrument that they use with the you no know, things which are in the back end and analyze it interpret their result and give us a new findings some of the findings could be supporting to what we already discovered or some of the things which could be totally new which is open for the investigation by the other teams of the people around the world and we come keep on contributing to the science we keep on exploring the nature you know but there are varied other kind of astronomers as well who doesn't need any kind of observations but they only use the knowledge based on the mathematics physics chemistry whatsoever they know they really don't use the observations but they use the various methods and techniques they have learned out of the laws and the you know various things that has been discovered or about to discover so those people who work with only pen and paper working for long hours and solving the equations we call them as a theoretical scientist or we call them as a theoretical astronomers so with this you must have got an idea that to know about the astronomy there are various people work together and of course 
various people study the various objects. So give you the idea, what are all the different topics are in the astronomy. Those who learn about the distances, who knows about the physical things about their positions, where are they, how far are they, they these, every, all those study comes under the spherical or celestial astronomy. And the people who work on this are called the astrometrists. They are again astronomer, but more specifically called them as an astrometrist. The people who try to learn only about the planets on the planet, what are the conditions to have such a life on the planet? It is with our own solar system or maybe an extra, extra, stellar, extra terrestrial uh, systems which are there. So many scientists are exploring the various other solar systems which are part of the different stars. And as of today, more than 3,000 such solar systems are being discovered. But out of that, how many can be possible to have a life? Those people who work on those kind of a study are called the planetologists. And the study is called planetary astronomy. The people go beyond the solar system who talks about, who work on the stars, their evolution, what is it contained, how big they are, how they live in their lifetime. All those people are called the stellar astrophysicists or stellar physicists or stellar astronomers. And they learn about the variety of the things about the galaxy. We call them as a galactic astronomers or we call them as a uh, stellar astronomers. Beyond the galaxy, we all know everything combined together, we call it as an universe. So understanding the presence of the universe, how do the universe have come to the existence, how it is evolving, how it is moving in with the time, all that is part of what we call it as an universe, as an, as an object to study. Those people are called the cosmologists who try to learn, try to investigate, try to inform us about the existence of the universe, how it has come. Those people are called the cosmologists. Now, in this particular thing, one thing which you all must be knowing, and if you don't know, let me tell you. No, there are a variety of scientists who have been working on the various fields of physics, mathematics, chemistry, biology, all those things. So over a period, astronomy has also become an inter interdisciplinary subject where we require biologists, we require chemists, we require the engineers, we require the technicians, everything we require. So astronomy has over the period of also become an interdisciplinary subject. And let me tell you, there are variety of objects in the astro in the cosmos, as you must have heard. There are planets, satellites, there are asteroids, there are stars, but there are also kind of a pulsars. There are neutron stars, there are black holes, and all those black holes, neutron star, pulsars, all those come into the high energy astronomy. Those radiate a huge amount of energy. And knowing about them, those people who study about them are called the high energy astronomers who study the objects which radiates largely in the higher energies. And you must have heard about the electromagnetic spectrum. When the what we see, what we see is the optical radiation, which, and if you try to know the re entire electromagnetic spectrum, Right, right from the gamma rays, which are the smallest kind of an, uh, you know, waves that we could think of. It starts from the gamma rays, X-rays, then ultraviolet, optical, infrared, microwave, radio. This is the huge range of the electromagnetic spectrum. All those depends on, those radiations depends on what is the system involved in radiating the images. And... Based on those radiations, astronomy has also been classified into the optical astronomy, infrared astronomy, microwave astronomy, radio astronomy. And as I said to you, there are certain objects which radiate only in a specific energy level or specific wavelength or specific radiations. Those, like for example, just let me tell you, the you know, very beginning stars where the stars are taking the birth that region radiates maximum into the infrared part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So learn to learn about the origin of the stars, to how do the stars are taking the birth, how do they come together and do it. We 
get all those informations through the infrared astronomy. When we talk about what we see in the entire world, whatsoever we see with our own eyes is the only small portion of the entire electromagnetic spectrum, ranging from the gamma rays to the radio waves. We see only very, very small portion of this, which has a various different units. As far as the optical astronomy goes, we call it as a 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer, which is the range of an optical radiation. And that is where we as a human can see. And that's where whatsoever the radiation fall in this particular region, those study in this region are called the optical astronomers. They study about it. And there are various wavelengths work in, as I said, the high energy, like X-ray, those people are different people to work on. They radiates in the electron holes. Those energy falls into the electron hole and have a nanometer. These are very, very small uh, wavelength bands or small wavelength energies. Those are called the high energy. And as we progress towards the low energy or uh, what we call it as a higher wavelength, we move towards uh, infrared, microwave and radio waves. And this is how we can imagine, we can just think of the larger the wavelength, we will require larger the telescope to observe. And that is how we learn about them. So what you see here now is the telescopes which are working in the optical radiation of 400 to 700 nanometers. So you can see some of the telescopes there. They all work in a what we call it as a optical astronomy work. And this is the radio telescope. As I said, higher energy requires the bigger telescope and we see the radio telescopes are being used for knowing about them. So this is a small journey of an astronomy that we have tried to make you learn about them. But I, shall I tell you something which is very interesting? Those who doesn't know really astronomy so much in detail, those astronomers are still have a chance or those people can still have a chance to contribute into the astronomy and we call them as an amateur astronomers. Do you must have heard about the comets? Those are occasional visitors. I have also explained in the beginning. Those frequent visitors, those come, those discoveries are by made by the very, very common man and the credit goes to the amateur astronomer. And with this, I hope even a small person who knows only about the, you know, as an interest for the astronomy, they can also contribute into the discoveries of the astronomy. And that's why the astronomy is open for everyone to come, enjoy, learn about the, our existence, try to think about when, how are we going to leave the world and how do the, all the objects in the sky leave. I hope you must have enjoyed this journey and we look forward to have more details in a next lecture. Thank you so much.